So we're down here at Hammett at the Viking Industries big ship lift and you'll see in a second or two uh, a series of photographs of when the Kookaburra Queens went up for their annual maintenance and can I just place on record my great appreciation to Peter Hardstay from Millcraft who gave me a call and said the Kookaburra Queen 2 is going up on the Hearts, do you want to have a look? And of course John McGregor and I jumped at the opportunity. And that phone call followed some other great assistance that Peter Hardstay had given us in the form of providing us with a great deal of really great photographs which make up the second half of the YouTube that you're about to see. So with that we'll say good afternoon and So here's my son holding a photograph of Kookaburra Queen 2 during construction and in the background is the Kookaburra Queen 2 going down the river. Now this photo was taken about half an hour prior to us doing a YouTube where John McGregor and I corrected a little bit of history um, in our recording of the YouTubes because after the phone call from Peter Hartstay and us going down to record um, a YouTube on the history of the Kookaburra Queen 2, we actual fact got the history a little bit wrong, where we had the Kookaburra Queen 2 moored and the Kookaburra Queen 1 going up and down the river. In actual fact, it was back to front. Anyway, we had corrected the error and I just thought I'd play after this um, just a small part of the interview with Gary Balkan to enable you to get a feel of the interviews with Gary Balkan and encourage you to go off and have a look at the series of the Gary Balkan interviews because they are quite good. And after that, we are then going to go back to Norm Love um, and find out a bit more of the history of Millcraft and have a look of a lot more photographs of the Kookaburra Queen 2 being made and they come back to me and have another look at what I consider my personal favourites in the making of the Kookaburra Queen 2 photograph collection. And I got ambitious enough to do a Kookaburra 2. I was concerned about what we do after Expo, so I looked around first for a steel hull because uh, I was very anxious to go to St Helena and other places like that across the Horn Bay. So but, uh, the Millcraft people approached me again with a plan that they knew I'd wanted a side, a wheel, the stern wheel at this time, as against the side wheel of Kookaburra 1. And I uh, I eventually agreed in price, etc. And uh, so Kookaburra 2 then was built. And I said the stipulation was it had to be ready on the first day of next day. And how tight would you be able to achieve that timetable? We were worried about it the day before, they were still doing sea trials. And, uh, but I went to the official launch at South Bank and I was just holding my head up, looking for the boat to come around the corner, and there it came. And I think a lot of the people had came too because they knew it wasn't the Kookaburra one. Yeah. It would have been quite a sight of it. It was magnificent. That would have been just after the uh, huge inflatable platypus went down the river. That's right. Yes, there it was. Yeah. Ah. One of the advantages of doing these uh, YouTubes is the history you have to you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Peter Racy here from Foundation Expo 88 YouTube, and I'm here with Norm Ruff from the Bulimba District Historical Society. And Norm, in the first instance, is going to give us a little snapshot of Millcraft. Um, and Millcraft was where the Kookaburra Queens 1 and 2 were made. Uh, and I thought Brian Thompson was the original owner of Millcraft, but Norm's corrected me this morning. So, Norm, give us a bit of a historical perspective. Well, over the years, um, first start off with the McClear family, they were down further on the river, or further up the river, I should say. And so they were the original, or one of the original boat builders that taught a lot of the younger builders how to uh, build boats. And from there, the Millis family came along, who we were related to the McClears, and they had the down there it was a lot smaller than it is now. Uh, however, 
they used to move their house every now and then to make it room enough to do certain things with the boats that were built there. So, um, Millis, I'm going to call the tops of the category. now down at Byron Street of Ulimba. Behind me we have the shed where the boat was built, but around the corner on the way down we also saw a house where one of the workers used to live. Uh, Vic Green, he was a very old um, shipwright. He did all of the work on the steering wheels for Millcraft and the steering wheel on the Kookaburra Queen too was very large. So you could appreciate when you see the photographs later on of the type of work that went into building that steering wheel. Uh, in the shed itself, you'll find that they built the hull and the first level of the uh, boat and then they had to move it outside the shed because it became too big to work inside. So the uh, second story and the wheelhouse was then put on in the shed. And now it's over to the photographs. Ladies and gentlemen, in this last piece uh, on the making of the Kookaburra Queen 2, we're going to go through a series of photos that show uh, what I think personally is the most interesting part of the manufacturing process, and that is the original ribs going in, uh, the original um, sheeting going on the ribs, uh, and inside the hull. Uh, and I always find that the most fascinating part of the construction of a boat, uh, because when the boat is finished, you very rarely ever see those innards of a boat, and I always find them fascinating. So we'll just go over to the, uh, the photos, uh, and thank you very much for watching.